Bud, were you surprised? Because when we discussed the possible openings, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but my note was we'll see what Syracuse's administration wants out of its football program, you know, in terms yeah. of what its decision is. What is your read then on uh, Syracuse football after firing Dino Babers on Sunday? So Dino Babers went 20 and 45 in ACC play. That includes a one and nine during the COVID year. Syracuse was one of the teams that was hit really hard by, by the COVID year. So, you know, if, if you look at his sort of non COVID year record, he's 19 and what, 36. Mm -hmm. That's not amazing, but that's not really horrendous over seven seasons. Like he's almost averaging three wins a year in conference at Syracuse. Personally, I don't think you can do much better than that. Mm -hmm. A little bit better, maybe like get it to like three and a quarter as an average. Who in this league does Syracuse realistically expect to be favored over if they're doing well on an annual basis? Boston College, it's, it's the Big East teams. It, yeah. it should look it's like Boston B, College. BC and Wake, right? I guess. Well, I, like they, but I Wake's think, been better than him for about a decade now. Yeah. I understand why you made the firing because I think they wanted to do it last year. And we knew, even though they're not public, there's so many like journalism grads from Syracuse. We kind of yeah. had a feel for what the buyout was. Uh, and this is sort of the, the shell game you have to play as an AD. Even if Syracuse's AD doesn't think they can do better than Dino, and they might not be able to, right? He still has to fire him because you have to keep your donors believing that if they just give a little more, if they keep giving, you can get the right coach. You can buy the right player and get over that hump. Even if the AD doesn't believe it, you still got to make the firing because that's what keeps the dollars coming in. You can't go to him and be like, hey, guys, honestly, being in contention for bowl games most of the time, making them sometime, is about all we can do at Syracuse. We took the check to move to the ACC. Now we're taking the losses. The sports landscape has drastically changed in about the last 10 years. This is kind of what we are. That's not going to get donations, right? That doesn't get the checkbook out. So, we, we don't do pretend on this show real well. I think Syracuse probably can do better than, than what Dino Babers did. Can they do drastically better? I, I don't I don't really think so because I think it's more about the program than it is the coach. And you got to keep season ticket sales and you got to keep donations coming in, which means you got to sell them the hopium that maybe if they just get the right guy, they can be a lot better. This is Syracuse's 11th season in the ACC. They've been to a bowl game three times. Mm. They have finished with a winning record in conference play once. They've gone four and four twice, but they only finished with a winning record twice or once. Four and four in the Atlantic is like six and two in the Coastal. Yeah, I, I mean, that's Clemson, FSU, NC State, Wake, constantly, yeah. and then and Louisville. But again, it's you know, I I don't know. I'm, I'm with you, but I don't know what you're realistically expecting from your coaches in this job now that you have moved to the ACC like you were you were a better program back in the old Big East days but a lot has changed since then and even for as bad as Babbers' overall record is he is still currently fourth all time for most wins as a Syracuse football coach in program history it's not like there is some I mean I know Jim Brown played there I know they have all this history but it's not like it's some long ultra successful football program like getting two bowl games should be the goal. Now, that said, Dino Babbers didn't get to enough bowl games. And I do feel like there's a chance that that 10-win season was probably worse for him than, you know, maybe just going 8-4 and four that season would have been. I think it set expectations a little too high for what could be accomplished there. But it's, it's kind of an identity crisis kind of thing for Syracuse right now because moving forward, you have to figure out what you are and what you can realistically try to be in the ACC, and not to mention, you know, I don't, we, we don't know how much longer the ACC is even going to exist. So I don't know. It's, it's, it'll be an interesting search. It'll be an attractive job because it is still a Power Five job. But if you were to rank like the Power Five gigs from best to worst, it's a pretty good argument that Syracuse would be bottom five, right? Ooh. Well, what? No. Washington State and uh, Oregon State are gone, right? So, yeah, they're gone. Yeah, I mean, that's not Power 5 anymore. Um, I'm not going to say I mean, Power 5. Vanderbilt, Duke, those are harder jobs to win. Yeah, but you're going to make more money at Vanderbilt, and you can't win at either place, realistically, given your, your opponents. 
I what disagree. Duke? Duke has won a lot of games through multiple coaches at this point. What about that's more what about of an indictment Texas on? But I think that's more of an indictment on why I'm okay with this move because I think the expectation should be like I every once in a while you've got to have an eight win season and to only have one win with more or one season with more than seven and being that ten win season. I think it is. I you know I'm usually on the side of coaches. Like, hey, give them time. You know, we fire coaches way too soon. Eight years is a long time in this business, and it just felt a little bit stale. And I think Bud hit on a great point. You want energy, excitement to sell to your base. And I don't know if Dino bought brought a lot of that. I think he was pretty comfortable where he was. And I don't think you'll have to pay somebody much more. He probably could even get somebody for a little bit less than what Dino was making or around there. And you're going to get some more ticket sales, and more excitement. And I think even on the recruiting trail, it helps just to just like to reinvigorate the program. So this is one where I actually think it does make sense. But I think the expectation for Syracuse should be bowl eligibility most years and occasionally get eight or nine. And you have some, you know, a big upset here or there. And if you're six, you know, if you're below 500, it better not be more than two years in a row. Does... um well, number one, you know what? I still Syracuse haven't heard said? five worst jobs in Syracuse yet. Okay, in the power that's five, a good point. All right, let's do it. <laughs> what, jo- jobs that we dev- in, in in the power five? Northwestern Boston College, is the worst job, right? Yeah. Harder academics, probably. Mm-hmm. I see. I see a lot of the names on that list that have had a lot more success than Syracuse recently. So, if they're worse jobs, about, they keep like, winning. But somehow. see, I think it I, I, I think be... both Cal and Stanford are, are worse. Yes. Okay. I think it should be like Especially Iowa now. State. Like you should be able to have that much success. I think it's a very similar job to Iowa State. I th- I think one thing we're not considering here is the location of Syracuse. It is not exactly in a football hotbed filled with great local talent that you can get to come to the school. You have to go outside of your G- your region and convince kids to move up to Syracuse to play football for you in the winter. And it's not exactly the most appealing place to be. If my choice is hanging out in North Carolina and playing for Wake Forest or going up north and sitting in seven feet of snow for a couple months... I'm probably choosing Wake Forest. It wasn't always that way, though. Like I, I, I play golf with a guy named Terry, and he was a you know good player for Syracuse. Um, I think he actually backed up Jim Brown. Like they used to get dudes, man. Like like Terry's got like meat hooks for hands. Like you're like whoa. Like and you know just nowadays, like a guy like Terry doesn't go to Syracuse, right? Because no. like the demographic of where football players come from has, has it's not completely it's eliminated, but it's yeah exactly. So it, it is harder to get guys there. Like, do they have any NIL? Dino is just pretty transparent about this, right? He's like, yeah. They just lost the dude, right? The guy that was yeah, the basketball yeah. booster. Was, yeah. I, I bet you that, that the off. mood at Wake is about the same as it is in Syracuse right now. They're like, damn, our best players are playing on, playing on other rosters. Yeah. the um, <clears throat> When the injuries hit, what we talk about in like mid-October, yeah. they said, you know, Dino, like, where's the depth? And he said, it's in the portal. You know, he they got raided and – he, he was honest like, about it. Yeah, yeah, he was very honest about it. Syracuse has one of those TV ADs, so of course he's going to be all about branding. He's all going to be about the excitement, the way that this looks, the way that it's presented. So that's no surprise there. John Wildhack spent 30 years at ESPN uh, prior to uh, moving into the athletic director realm. He's been there for seven years, uh, taking over, you know, he um, he's he says that that a national search is underway. So real quickly, um, I, does his association with Dino Babers make it difficult for Sean Lewis to be a candidate for the job? Because prior to being the head coach at Kent State, he was offensive coordinator for Syracuse's offense that was doing pretty well. So do you think that Sean Lewis, um, you can hire Sean Lewis and be able to sell that to the people you're trying to sell it to 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 raise the funds for? NIL and otherwise? I I think that, that's a good point, right? Like, I I think Sean Lewis is a dang good coach, but Dino Babers also came from the MAC, which is mm-hmm. where Sean had his last success before. Well, Sean came with him. Sean was with yeah. Dino at Bowling Green, and so when Dino right. gets hired, he brings Sean Lewis with him. The offense is exactly what, you know, as advertised, Sean Lewis gets the job at Kent State. So, you know, like you're – you're hiring. You're making a hire that is a really good coach, but you're not separating yourself from the previous regime at all. I, look, I I would certainly give Sean a call. 
but it also is going to depend on, on what other options you have, right? Like I, I think Sean knows what he's doing. It, his last four seasons in the MAC was eighteen and ten at Kent State. Kent State is it's I arguably the worst job win. in the entire country. Like, like I mean, what job do we think is actually worse than Kent State? Akron. <laughs> and even then, like it's, it's like you're saying it with a question mark, right? Yeah. So, yeah. I, I don't know who the hire is, but I think that what you should be looking for, whether it's Sean Lewis or anybody else, is a coach in a system instead of a coach who's going to come in and try to, you know, convince you we're going to bring in the best players. Because it's pretty clear. You're you're not going to bring in the best players. Yeah. You Dino has been open about having trouble keeping players from entering the portal and leaving for other jobs when you do develop them and they have success. Other teams come calling and Syracuse can't really afford to keep them. So you need to find somebody who has an identity for their program, can implement that identity and stick to it and find the talent that fits. Like it's funny. Maybe if they make this move two years ago, they just go a couple miles north to Buffalo and get Lance Leipold to take over the job. But that's the kind of coach that they need for this program. And they're not hard, they're not easy to find, but they do exist, whether it's a Leipold, whether it's a Jerry Kill, like we talked about on Saturday night, who I think would be a very good person for a job like this, or whether it's Chuck Martin, another Met coach in Miami of Ohio, who just kind of had plenty of success at the lower levels, has moved up to the Mac. And yes, it's the mac but it's also a league in which you don't typically see programs have sustained success because it's kind of just a random number generator yet his chuck martin's mac miami teams keep winning every single year jason candles toledo teams keep winning every single year so that needs go ahead that's one i'm skeptical on because jason like toledo is basically like alabama i get it in terms of resources like candle botches games with a major talent advantage Mm -hmm. he's kind of like i would rather have chuck martin than than candle yeah, like I would, I would rather I, have Martin. No doubt, because I, I have no idea if Jason Candle can coach without a massive talent advantage. Mm-hmm. Chuck Martin, I don't think he'll get it because it's not sexy, right? Like Miami Ohio does not play a real sexy brand of ball. Although this year, when they had Gage and they had the quarterback, it was better. Um, sorry, I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just like, I, I I've seen oh. Candle on a number of these write ups. I'm like. What evidence is there that he's a good coach with, without a massive talent advantage? I, I'm sorry, the Mario of the Mac. Keeps. The Mario of the Mac is going to stick. That just sounds Mario of funny. the Mac. <laughs> Mario of the Mac. Um, I it is. I've been kicking that around in my head a little bit. No, it's it, that's a good one. I'm glad you let it out. I've also seen Dan Mullen floated as a possibility for this, and I know that he's from the Northeast. But if Dan Mullen's not interested in Mississippi State, I don't think he's going to be interested in Syracuse either. I think Dan Mullen, if he comes back, is looking for a. Uh, higher profile gig but it's just yeah it's a situation where you need a program builder in there somebody who knows what they're doing has proven you know success at other places and can come in and just establish some kind of foundation which you can try to build on what do you think about the holy cross guy like do you make this move now because you you don't want him to get hired by by uh boston college is it bob chesney yeah I'm not super familiar with his program, but I know he's had success at Holy Cross and he's familiar with the Northeast. So yeah, if he, he seems to have that like Leopold vibe where it's like everywhere he goes, he finds a way he to wins. win. And mm-hmm. those guys kind of stick. And I, if I'm hiring for this job, I don't want a guy who's like, oh, look at his track record when he has a massive talent advantage or when he has a super special quarterback. Like that's not going to translate to Syracuse, I I think. Man, um, it is not sexy to talk about uh coaching searches at the have nots. No, it ain't. Uh, like we got Al Golden is another name I've seen out there. Like that, 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 that one gets you fired up to buy some season tickets and donate. No. He's a Northeastern guy. He could. He yeah. actually, I will say this. He won at Temple. He was the first guy, wasn't he? Yeah. 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 He won at Temple. Miami behind the scenes was a disaster when Al Golden was there. Like Al Golden, I don't think did an amazing job, but he also, I'm not really sure how many coaches would have done a great job with what was going on at Miami when he was there. They also like okie doked him with the sanctions. Remember? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like he took Will the he... job like a week later, like surprise sanctions. <laughs> <laughs> Nevin Shapiro just bursts out of the wall. Yeah. Like, um, will he coach in a shirt and tie? <laughs> kind of we, his brand. Isn't we it? used to have a bit on Tomahawk. When I ran Tomahawk nation of, it was like, like we, we would, after every loss, it would be like Al golden hand you the keys for the, for your enterprise rental car. And we had a Photoshop behind the counter, but then it was like Al Golden hand you another L. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was quality. Um, all right. One last time. I mean, we, we got to play it, right? Yeah. 
Yeah. Just it's all right. Close your eyes. Boy. Visualize this. You're in the carrier dome. The house is filled. The feeling is electric. The noise is deafening. You have a defense that is relentless. You have a special team that has been well coached. You have an offense that will not huddle. And you have a game that's faster than you've ever seen on turf. Open your eyes. That's going to be a reality. That's going to be Syracuse football. Mm -hmm. Mm. It was it was not Syracuse football often enough. Um, Jordan uh, in the Cover Three tailgate was asking, uh, you know, was, was that a pregame speech from the video board? That was actually from his introductory press conference. It was one of it was a, it was an electric introductory press conference. We'll see who Syracuse. Hey, you know what? Bar set high. Next Syracuse head football coach. That's what you got to do at your intro introductory press conference. 